Hello everyone and assalamu alaikum. This is Introversion to Psychology Part 1 by Dear Knowledge. Okay, last time we uh, completed the uh, part 1 and part 2 of the lesson 3. And lesson 3 is all about the kinds of perception in which we are supposed to complete the... Um, and we have complete uh, completed the spatial perception, uh, which is in which we have discussed about the perception of depth and distance. After that, we discussed uh, about the temporal perception in our previous uh, lectures. So if you haven't watched that video, I have given links in description. Go ahead, click on those links and watch those videos. So in this video, we'll start with the auditory perception which is going to be the last part of lesson three, uh, lesson three, part three, and it's about the auditory perception. So as the name suggests, if I talk about the auditory perception, it's all related to your audition, your hearing, and uh, the way you perceive sound, and et cetera, et cetera. So auditory perception is a very, very, very short topic to discuss. So Let's start with an auditory perception. So as you people already know about uh, what actually perception is, but still if you uh, uh, don't know or you don't have an idea, I'll just remind you that perception is giving meaning to a stimuli. So um, auditory perception will be the ability to receive and interpret information that reaches our ear. And we have also discussed about the structure and functions of ears. So if you haven't watched that video too, I have given a link in description. You can click on that link too if you want to watch that video. So uh, what actually happens in an auditory perception is that our ears are involved in it. Obvious, obviously, it's all related to our hearing. So auditory perception is the ability to receive and interpret information that reaches our ear. And uh, what it includes or the processes or you know, processes which are involved in auditory perception is the, um, it, um, the reception of information or uh, rece it's re we receive information and then there is information transmission and in the end there is information manipulation there are some phases which are involved in it which we'll be discussing in this video so we'll be discussing these uh, processes one by one so let's start with the first uh, process which is receive information what actually happens is that when an object vibrates or when we hear a sound um, uh, for example, a uh, human voice, uh, when a human talk, what happens is that uh, the vibration occurs, the vocal cord vibrates, and the waves produced by the waves which are produced by this action are transmitted by the air or other means. And when these waves reach the inner air, uh, certain cells are activated. And then the next process, which is about the um, information transmission, so the cell uh, produces a signal that are transmitted through different nuclei until it finally reaches the medial um, geniculate uh, nucleus uh, in the thalamus. Again, if you haven't watched the uh, video of uh, structure and function of ear, I have given a link in the description. So in this video, we will be only discussing the auditory tree perception. And if you want to uh, watch the video or you want to uh, watch the lectures of the structure and function of ear, you can also watch that video. So in this way, this lecture will be more easy for you to understand. Okay, so information transmission, what happens is that information is, again, it is transmitted and the last uh, process is about the information manipulation and what happens in information manipulation is that auditory information which are received by the ear, it is sent to the auditory cortex uh, in the temporal lobes and the information is manipulated uh, and sent to the rest of the brain to allow us to interact with it so these are the processes which are involved in our auditory perception now there are some characteristics of sound um, and the first one is about the intensity and the second one is about the tone then there is a timbre and then uh, duration so we will be discussing it one by one very briefly because we have already discussed this topic in our previous lectures. Again, if you haven't watched that video, I have given a link in description, uh, um, the structure and function of air. And that video is very detailed and very helpful for you all. If you have watched that video, so this lecture will be very easy for you to understand. Uh, so let's start with the characteristics of sound. Uh, 
in order for audio to perception to happen the brain has to analyze the properties and characteristics of the sound so intensity what it uh, happens is that it refers to the volume um, it happens uh, or refers to if the volume is high or low then there is a tone what happens in tones is that it refers to if the sound is um, higher or lower now intensity refers to the volume if the volume is higher or lower and the tone it refers to the sound if the sound is higher or lower and then there is a timbre um, in timbre it allows us to distinguish and uh, recognize voices instruments and sounds that um, are usually identified as the color of sound and then there's a duration, a time, uh, the vibration of the sound lasts. So these are the characteristics of the sound. Now the next one is about the phases of sound. Like when we hear something, when we perceive a sound, when the auditory perception occurs. So there are some phases which are involved uh, when a sound wave enter um, in our ear and the processes which are involved in it. So these are some phases which are included in it. The first one is about detection. The, the second one is about the discrimination and after discrimination there is identification and recognition and after the uh, identification and recognition there is comprehension so as the name suggests um, their functions uh, like the functions are same as the name that are mentioned here so what happens in detection is that the most it is the most basic part of being able to perceive an auditory stimulus is that it has enough intensity to reach your ear and um, it, it is also necessary for the sound to be within an audible ra range and if it meets these two requirements the brain has able or the brain is able to detect where the object is that is producing the vibration and if um, a uh, even um, if it is moving, uh, for example, if someone speaks too quietly, we aren't able to hear them. So in detection of sound, what happens is that we detect the sound. And the next one is about discrimination. So in order to perceive and appreciate a sound, we have to be able to differentiate the sound from other background noise. And if you're at the restaurant or party where there is a lot of noise, you may not be able to hear uh, what the other peoples are speaking or what the, uh, other people are saying. So in the phase of discrimination, what happens is that we are able to discriminate between uh, different sounds. Then there is an identification and recognition. Now we have to be able to identify where the sound is coming from um, as a voice, instrument or any other sound. Now, this includes recogni recognizing a personal relation to the sound. For example, um, if it's uh, someone's uh, relative's voice or your uh, relative's voice or someone you know. So in order to perceive a voice, we need to be able to identify it as such and not confuse with another sound. So as well as identify the voice as that are of a friend not a stranger so identification and recognition is all about identifying a sound uh, or and recognizing it then there is a comprehension again as the name suggests so comprehension it is essential to understand a sound that we hear whether it uh, it is a message uh, or someone uh, that someone is telling us something or the meaning of a sound for example the bell showing that the class is over and if a friend at a party is telling you that he or she has to leave so it is important that we understand the message um, that person is transmitting now, uh, in a short, what happens in comprehension is that we interpret what we hear. Now, again, if uh, we just do a quick revision uh, in the phases of sound, so what happens in detec detection is that we detect a sound, then in discrimination, we discriminate it from the other sounds, and then there's an identification and recognition in which we identify a sound and recognize it. And in comprehension, we interpret as sound. Okay, so let's talk about the auditory cues. Now, auditory cues play important role in auditory perception. 
Uh, we use audit train formation to judge distance and direction as well, just as we can uh, use information from our both eyes to perceive the distance of an object. Uh, we can use information from one or both ears to detect, uh, detect the distance of a sound. And usually only one ear, the louder the sound, the closer we perceive it to be. And uh, using both ears uh, allows us to um, more accurately locate the direction as well as the distance of a sound. Uh, for example, when a sound is directly to your um, left, the sound wave reaches to your left ear a few um, uh, a few uh, thousandths of a second before it reaches to your right ear. Now, because your left ear is, is closer to the, so uh, the sound or to the source, uh, the sound it detects is also slightly louder. Now, your brain circulates or, or your brain uh, calculates these differences in time lag and loudness and quickly perceive that the sound of the sound, um, the source of the sound is to your left. Now, notice that when you're trying to determine the direction uh, from which a sound is coming, such as an ambulance siren uh, a few blocks away, you instinctively tilt your head to one side. Now, doing so adds to the contrast between the information perceived to uh, uh, your two ears and helps you perceive the distance and direction of the sound. So, this was all about today's video. If your concept is clear, you can like the video. If not, you can ask us in the comment section and we will be happy to help you out. Plus, if you're new to this channel, you can subscribe to our channel. You can subscribe to Dear Knowledge. You can click on the bell icon uh, to stay updated. So whenever we upload a new video, you will never ever miss any notification from us. Plus, you can channel, um, you can share the link of this channel. You can share the link of this video with your family members and friends because sharing is caring. Until then, Allah Hafiz.